For instance, for the uh, uh, for the uh, torrenting system that can be taken now, you can send a thousand bytes of data in, uh, with a separate arbitrary message, it's called. It's possible to just transmit it openly to the whole network, unencrypted, so it's also possible to put in links. So this would be a very simple method to have a non-server bound link collection for, for instance, torrenting. But you can also do it with other kinds of transactions. It's possible to send on the blockchain messages to applications over the blockchain which will be recorded and can be checked by all these applications and they will be in the system for as long as they need to be. One thing that I didn't put in here because it's being developed, it's one of the most difficult things that Ethereum is also struggling with, is pruning. It is possible to prune blockchains, to take things. We put things in, but if you look at the Bitcoin blockchains, so if you have tried to download the complete blockchain, turn on your computer and wait a very long time. And this is a problem that all blockchain technology will have a problem with in the end, that the blockchain becomes so huge, you can't use the blockchain itself anymore for normal users. That's why we have these light, yeah, these light clients. Um, Next has been built to support blockchain pruning, but just as Ethereum, we haven't quite figured out how to prune. It is a difficult one because what you take out is also irretrievably lost. Um, this is a, a tough nut to crack, but in combination with data transmission, I did want to mention it. Alias system is a system that allows you to remap certain strings to other strings. Um, at this moment, it is meant a lot of people use it to name their accounts. So you have a number in, in uh, a numbered account, and you uh, you combine a name to it, so you can just use human readable names. But it's actually meant and possibly to use to make it into a, a decentralized DNS system. Namecoin is also doing this. Uh, it is possible not to uh, have your DNS, your, your, your domains uh, in servers, but on the blockchain. So it's, you could create, in principle, if people build on it, you could use alias system to build a decentral, completely decentral internet. That's the idea. A lot of people have been working on that, but this is also one of the things you can do with alias system. The other one is the biggest at this moment is the asset exchange. It's something that Counterparty does, Mastercoin does, um, and we do it a lot. The asset exchange is colored coins. It means that you can create tokens on Next uh, in any volume that you want and you can trade them freely. Most people use it at this moment to trade things they call stocks. Not really a good idea if you do real stuff because you have this SEC after you. But it is a very good way to um, crowdfund, for instance, to, um, uh, to generate initial funding for businesses. Also, um, tokens of membership can be created. There are many different things. Loyalty tokens is one of the implementations we're looking at. Again, completely decentralized, and it can be combined with all these other things, like I said, with the voting system. So if you have owners of a company who need to vote, or who you want to vote, you can combine these different kinds of things. And you can also weigh it, so if someone has more assets, more uh, ownership within a company, he gets more voting power. Another part, last one on the list, is a marketplace. We have a built-in uh, sales system. It is, uh, a lot of people have been talking about Silk Road, Silk Road 2, all these things that got taken down, people arrested. Marketplace is not the answer to it, but it has the same possibility. It is a possibility to put or to put sales on the blockchain and sell them to any party out there. And it's an escrowed system, you put up uh, a sell order, someone else with another Next account puts in a uh, buy order, and then uh, the salesperson has to confirm that until that time the money is in escrow, and then the sale is done. It is, was originally called the digital goods store, 
um, and it's mainly used at this moment for, for instance, um, people who are selling domain names, music, links, uh, digi real digital goods, but it's of course also possible to sell physical goods with it, with the problem that you cannot enforce the fact that people even send these physical goods. So what's also going to be combined with this is a rating system, an online, uh, on blockchain rating system for uh, sellers. Another part that is for people who are used to proof of work not that intuitive is account leasing. Uh, one of the things that's different in proof of stake is you don't get new coins. You need to have a stake already in the system, so you need to have Next in your account and you have to have your wallet open. That will allow you to create blocks and within a proof of stake system you get the transaction fees in the blocks. So if there are the, the thousand transaction fees you will get this. If you have a billion coins and you only have a thousand next to your account and somebody else has, has two million, then the chances of you forging a block are really, really, really low. A lot of people uh, have to, we, one of, and, but people need to be incentivized to keep their wallets open, or at least to have the weight of the coins involved in the system to secure it. Account leasing, leasing is a method to do this. You can lend the power of your coins to another account, so you can pull the power, the forging power, without ever leaving uh, the coins leaving your wallet. So the forging people will still forge and secure the network without needing to have the, the very little stake active, because nobody wants. Uh, so most people don't want to have the computer running all day. A lot of people just don't do that. So this is a method to pull that power. Very shortly, this this is what we are planning to do. It's very small, uh, so I'm going very quickly past this because it turns out to be unreadable. Everything that I've just said is enclosed in the client that we have. So we have all screens are in one point. People can uh, uh, access this uh, with a third-party browser, which can be downloaded, or they can do it in their own browser. This is a bit more interesting because this is what Next is actually trying to do. Next doesn't want to be in the forefront. They don't, you don't need to have Next, Next, Next everywhere. The idea is that it powers other applications, that people use it in the background, like Intel with their Intel inside. If you have, well, if you have a computer with an Intel chip in it, at least a few years ago you had a good computer. Next tries to do the same thing. It is supposed to be a a blockchain that powers other applications. So one of the things that people are developing is crypto mail. This is encrypted mail on the blockchain. We have uh, a smart contract. This has just come out, a smart contract site, which uses the next blockchain to store the smart contracts. So it is possible to code them yourself. It can be used with any coin, so it doesn't need to have next coins. You can use it with Bitcoin. But the contract itself will be stored on Next. That's so. That's the way uh, the blockchain, our blockchain, can be used. This Next Free Market is basically a standalone application of that market system that I said. People can put up their own products, eBay-like format, on the free market. Everybody on the Next blockchain can see it and buy it but nobody can take it down, it's on that system and it's yours to do with what you uh, wish. No fees, free. Hmm? Images of next free market. Yes, you can put images with it, but the images won't be stored on the blockchain. It's, uh, this is, if you use the, uh, the normal version in the next client, you won't see any pictures at all. That's the basic functionality. What Free Market adds is the possibility to add the link and it will translate it into a picture. Yeah, definitely. If people want uh, to look at it, they can uh, go to these links. These are four of the, the most developed parts. 
Another part that I do want to, uh, some people may have not uh, uh, heard of it, there's this, this kind of a bit of a battle if you look on Bitcoin talk, it's about combining of blockchains and different things, blocknet. There's one that uses NXT, which is called the Supernet, uh, or Supernet is a combination of different cryptocurrencies, not to merge, but to use the strength of the different cryptocurrencies. In this case, Next is used as a kind of baseline and other currencies with anonymity or with um, ATM capabilities are, are uh, linked to it by a JSON uh, objects and they communicate together. Supernet is interesting to check out to see. We have another speaker here that, that comes in, Joachim, uh, Internet of Coins, did a speech uh, last time. He's working on the same kind of thing. It's the idea that cryptocurrency, we have 500 different cryptocurrencies and you see all these battles all the time. It's also possible to try at least to see where you can pull in the strengths and see where you can combine. Um, because otherwise most of them probably will just die. A few use cases. Like I said, crowdfunding is a very popular one. Anonymous uh, messaging, loyalty tokens, the bridging of blockchains is the, the super net uh, thing. But what also people have done uh, when people are trying to get a, a good, I won't say fair, a good distribution when they start a new blockchain. It's always a big problem. Who gets the first? It's also that uh, the same discussion about you have the people with the net gain and the net losers. That's usually what goes wrong in, a, in an IPO of a new coin. It can be done via the next asset exchange uh, in an automated way that people issue the tokens. People can, in a very cheap or even free way, get them and then, uh, then send them to an account that automatically will send out coins. And some people have done it. And games. Uh, this is one of my projects I'm developing to get another my own, but with a few others, an MMO, which uses blockchain uh, technology. So it's, it is in the world of Warcraft, but it is um, a way of storing game data on the blockchain to make it possible for people to run their own game servers, not proprietary. People could even fork it if they would, if, if they would take the, uh, the time for it. It is interesting to see what is possible with in-game currencies, so money that you have in the game system to exchange it to real currencies and, well, not back because that would destroy the game. <laughs> People would put in a thousand dollars and win everything. But it is an interesting uh, idea that we are trying to see how an in-game uh, in economy could link to an external economy. That's upcoming. If you want to know more, you can contact me. Most of the time I'm here anyway, so uh, you can always talk to me or Dave, who is sitting behind the camera there. Um, the main thing, I, what I would like you to take from this talk is that uh, one of the things to know about Next is we're not corporately run. We run, it's completely voluntarily run, which is one of, the pro one of the problems in our budgetary way. So we have a very small uh, non-paid group. We don't advertise that much. If we put up an advertisement on a coin market cap and we need to run it, we, our coffers will be empty very, very quickly. So I'm always happy and thankful to Bas that I'm allowed at least to speak here and to talk about all these things that we hear about and we say, okay, we can already do this, please come talk to us and see if we can make them happen. Um, because counterparty Ethereum, MasterCoin are certainly not the only ways to do things. Thank you.
Yeah, that would happen if he had a very large, large state. Then he would need 51%. In, uh, and the algorithm even works this way that it goes higher than 51%. But you would need to be able to get more, more than 500, uh, 500 million next into play. That is... To, to buy all the, the leases. Well, if you, need, if you, you would need to collude with a lot of people. It's at this point, uh, next distribution is such that we have the top 100 holds, I think 65%. So you would, if you would need it to, for collusion, you would at least 60, 70 people, you would need to get in on the deal. That's, that's quite a lot. It's not enough. It needs to be more. So distribution is an ongoing problem with all these systems. Um, but yes, that is always a danger with any kind of pooling. It's what we see in Bitcoin too. The pooling system is an inherent, I think, an inherently dangerous thing. People need to be aware that these 51% attacks are possible, or even less, if you have uh, less active players. Oh, this is one extra thing I nearly forgot to say because it is an important one. Bitcoin has been very well researched, proof of work, there's a lot, one of the things that has been told about proof of stake, you see this from Bitcoin core developers too, is ah, proof of stake not been researched, probably bogus, and you just don't know what's going to happen. We have a few PhDs working on it, so it is being researched at the moment, and also if things crop up, they will be uh, publicized. So it's open and these are known PhDs. It's not anonymous. This is one of the things we are trying to get out of our developers team at least. If people are interested in the scientific basis of proof of stake, I can at least get you into contact with the people who, who know about it and you also can talk about it in a, in a much more uh, uh, factual way because it's easy to say yes it works if you have no proof but it's very important for all these new consensus algorithms that they don't actually break down when they scale or uh, that people lose their money on it. Very important. Just wanted to say that. Any more questions? Okay, then uh, please the uh, pick up points for all Bas, uh, thank you. Uh, we will have a short break and after that uh, Alejandro will talk about uh, SendChat. SendChat uh, works on Telegram, if I'm right. So uh, get some drinks and then uh, we'll have the last presentation.